It was a wonderful Jewish moment, and partly uh, it was my Jewish moment, but mostly it belonged to my beautiful daughter Noah, who had just become a bat mitzvah. And I had told her in a little speech in Hebrew how much I loved her, and how proud I was of her. And now Noah, standing at the edge of the dance floor later that day, had just invited my mom to step forward and light one of the 13 candles with which she was honoring people who had influenced and loved her in her life, like my mom. And as I watched my mother, who is now 92 years old, moving slowly across the dance floor, and the three generations of us standing there side by side, I held a familiar pang of a familiar doubt about just how far I really want to go with this whole Jewish thing. <laughs> because here's the key fact. My daughter Noah is Jewish, but my mom is not. And neither am I. How did it come to this? Well, here's the story. December 1960, I raced home from kindergarten, clutching in my hand, gift-wrapped, the first present I had ever made for my mother. It was a brand new 1960 calendar, commercially printed, but glued by me onto a piece of blue construction paper under the guiding hand of my Jewish kindergarten teacher, Miss Lasky. I had also decorated this blue construction paper with snowflakes that I had cut out. Christmas was still a week away, but Miss Lasky that morning had shared with us that that night was the first night of Hanukkah that I had never heard of but she told us it was a time for giving presents. So I raced into the house and burst into the kitchen where my mom was and I thrust this gift out to her and she took it and she said, that's wonderful, John, we'll put it under the tree next week. And I said, but no, mommy, it's Hanukkah, it's Hanukkah. <laughs> and she said, what? And I said, happy Hanukkah, mommy, happy Hanukkah. <laughs> and she said, but John, we're not Jewish. And I said, what's Jewish? <laughs> and something really landed in me as my mom began to explain to me that different people believe in different things. Like the family four houses down, where that night they would be celebrating Hanukkah, but they would never be celebrating Christmas, which struck me as really sad. But it also lit this spark in me of a lifelong fascination with and attraction to the mysterious other. No Christmas, I thought. Who are these people? <laughs> A year goes by, it's Christmas again, Christmas Day, in fact, and that year my parents gave me for Christmas a 20 volume set of encyclopedias, and that very morning, verily under the bough of our Christmas tree, I opened up volume five, and the first word I looked up was the word Jew. And I read through the entire entry, and at the end it said, see also Israel. So I looked up Israel, and I read that entry, and it said, see Jerusalem, see David, see Moses, see Abraham, see the Maccabees, see Hanukkah. Wow. These people have their whole alternate reality. <laughs> I mean, Star Trek wasn't even on television yet, but I also felt like I was already exploring strange new worlds. <laughs> a few years later, I was about 11 years old, and just by chance, uh, a neighbor happened to play a comedy record for me. And it was a record of Borscht, Borscht Belt comics doing skits and songs about being Jewish, and I don't know why, but I just loved this thing. And I borrowed the record from him, and I kept it for about a year, and I must have played it every day, to the point where I got the whole thing totally memorized, which I'm about to prove, <laughs> if you'll allow me. When you're in love, the whole world is Jewish. When you're in love, the whole world is newish. You want to wink, you dance and feel so chipper. The moon is a yarmulke high in the sky, and each day is Yom 
kid. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it was, it was from this album that I began to 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 learn that in fact, when when Jews use the word Gentile, it's only ever when they're talking to a goy. That there that there was this whole secret code, and I was beginning to get into the inside of it. The last important piece that fell into place for me was when I was in high school. I attended an all-boys Catholic high school, and in junior year for our religion class, it was arranged for us to have uh, a talk from a rabbi who shared with us aspects of Judaism. And um, I happened to be the first one to raise my hand when question time came. And I said to him, Rabbi, I'm curious, how did Jews go about doing missionary work? How did Jews go out into the world and convert? And he said, well, actually, we don't do missionary work. We don't convert. And there was a silence and a pause. And then he said, to be honest, we don't really want you. <laughs> and I am just so attracted to rejection. <laughs> I was totally hooked from this point on. And in college, I, I ended up dating, not exclusively, but primarily Jewish women, and pretty much for the rest of my life after college as well. And from them, I, I continued to learn the culture. Bits of Yiddish began to thread their way into my conversation. I opened the door for Elijah year after year after year. And, and like an anthropologist, I began to learn about the many, many varieties of Jews. Ashkenazi, Sephardic, Reform, Conservative, Orthodox, Ultra-Orthodox, Reconstructionist. I mean, who knew that this stuff was out there? Self-hating Jews, what is that about? Excessively self-loving Jews, what is that about? Look, it was clear that I was coming to some sort of crossroads, some sort of spiritual crossroads in my life. And the obvious question is conversion. But I did not go in that direction. I went in another direction. And I married an Israeli. <laughs> and about that, let me just say, oi <laughs> No, I, I mean it in a good way. I have, I, we have a great family and two kids, and I have great in-laws. And you know, now I was like really inside. I mean, I, I had Jews walking around my house in their underwear. And, <laughs> And, and, and I was at dinner parties where they would analyze the recent Oscar awards by counting how many Jews had won awards in what categories. And it, it, it just felt so intimate. And, 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 and Catholics, Catholics do not do this. Another thing, you know, big difference I was beginning to, to become aware of between Catholics and Jews was the whole notion of ethics and doing good. And when you're Catholic, you try to do good, but you do good always with the notion that if you don't, you're going to pay for it really badly in the next life. But when you're Jewish, you do good because it's good to do good. And I liked that. And I embraced that. And you were really, really under my skin now. So why not convert? And the truth is, and I think this is very important, I don't feel Jewish. And I was always attracted to Jews as the other, and if I converted, I would be the other, and the whole thing wouldn't, wouldn't work that way. And, and there, there was also this, that by virtue of the fact that we had decided to raise our kids Jewish, and I embraced that totally. I mean, I'm such a fan of the Jews, you know, here I get to produce some of my own. I thought that this was really terrific. But by virtue of that fact, I became aware gradually that I had become a minority in my own household. And I found the feelings complicated. For example, I remember very clearly the day I picked my son up from Hebrew school here in this building. And he walked out to the car wearing his kippah, and it really gave me a jolt to see that. And it's not because where I grew up, there would be an instant loss of street credibility from that. It was because it was such a public emblem of the way in which his upbringing and my upbringing had already begun to significantly diverge. And then there was the time when my daughter, who was about seven, was sitting at home and I realized that she was very, very upset because Dad's Christmas tree was still up. 
And the Christmas tree is the third rail of the interfaith experience. And I realized that she felt bad because she didn't feel that she could invite her friends from JPDS over. And she felt bad that she felt bad because she knew that it meant something to me. And I felt bad that I had introduced this clash into the household. You know, I think outnumbered, I had begun to want to hold on to pieces of my heritage. And in some ways, that became the most Jewish thing about me. <laughs> so it's, it's turned out to be a lot more complicated than listening to a record play over and over and over again. But the, the fact is, I still feel a connection to the to the songs and the skits and the shtick and the Yiddish and the values and the whole idea of doing good and whatever it was that attracted me in the first place. And I just kind of decided that, you know, I'm going to let the record spin because I've jumped on board and I'm going to stay along for the ride. So when my mom stepped forward to light that candle at Noah's Bat Mitzvah, her words from 53 years ago, came back to me. But John, we're not Jewish. She's right. We're not. But my family is. Who are these people? <laughs> Three of them are my wife, my daughter, and my son. Thank you very much.